first into the den is German-born entrepreneur Max Ruter, who wants to take the dragons back to the bygone age of American prohibition. This is the look of a bootlegger as we imagine it back in the 1920s. Bootleggers were the people who actually moved and transported the alcohol and produced it illegally. Max's alcoholic display has certainly sent a couple of the dragon's thoughts in a westward direction, although not quite as far as America. Cider. 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 The Plymouth came out then. West Country Tom yeah, yeah, came yeah, yeah. out then. With Cider, Cider apples. Cider. Cider apples. From Plymouth. That's where I'm from. <laughs> Oh, God, you guys are doing my head in. Would you like a drink? Hello, dragons. My name is Max, and I run O'Donnell Moonshine Spirits and Liqueurs based in Manchester. Today, I'm asking for £200,000 in return for 5% equity. You may ask yourself, what is moonshine? Moonshine originated during the US Prohibition era in the 1920s, when the actual alcohol production was illegal. And we at O'Donnell Moonshine re revive this concept. We offer our customers a unique drinking experience consisting of new yet recognizable flavored spirits bottled in stylish mason jars and surround the entire product by the exciting stories of the infamous US Prohibition era. And now we're probably coming to the best part of the pitch where you can get to try the product. And I'm more than happy to take any of your questions. And thank you very much for your time. Bootleg-style booze is the business that German brewing entrepreneur Max Ruter is serving up to the dragons. Sorry, did you just pour it in there and drink from that? Yeah, just neat over ice. Or yeah. you can just drink like that. You can also go that way, Peter. That's absolutely fine. He's seeking a £200,000 investment in the business. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was going to say. It's quite strong. <laughs> Oh, wow. It's 25%. <laughs> In return, there's a 5% stake up for grabs. That's some serious shit, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the brew certainly packs a powerful punch. Can you do one of these? If I'm on a Friday night and I have a good night, I drink one of those bottles. You'll drink one of those, the whole one? Yeah. Oh my God, you're an animal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But Tuka Suleiman wants to know if the company finances stand up straight. Max, I'm not going to try it. I'm taking my fellow Dragon's view on that. <clears throat> Can you give me some numbers? Yeah, sure. So, 2018, 1.18 million turnover with a £200,000 loss. 2019, 1.38 million turnover with a net profit of £20,000. 2020, £993,000 turnover with break even. So 2021. We're looking at 2.5 million net turnover. So how much have you done up to now? We've done 500,000. So you've done roughly. 500 up to now in six months, and you're going to go to do another 2 million? Correct. That's to do with the fact of how our business works. We're basically doing 60 to 70% of our entire year's turnover in the second half of the year being in Christmas markets, Christmas period, because it is a very giftable item. So really, you've come in here with a valuation of four million. Yeah. You, you've lost money in the last three years. Yes. How much of that stuff have you drank? So what I've done is I've taken the projected turnover of 2022, which is 3.3 million net, times this by two, and made some adjustments. Oh, for... really? Can I tell you, if I took your formula on all my companies, I'd be in the sunshine, with a cigar, and my cocktail. I think your valuation is ridiculous. The price tag placed on the business has left Tuka Suleiman feeling hot under the collar. Peter Jones has been very thorough with the sampling of the goods. Has it left him in high spirits about the prohibition proposition? I actually think this is really clever, very simple. That top with a spout. I've not seen anything like this before. It's nice, I like it. I do like the concept. OK. How, how much money have you put into the business? So I joined the company last year. There's two business partners which cannot be here. They're based in Germany. They're also in the business. Um, they have sent a video message if you want to see this. Yeah, let's see the video message yeah. from them. 
Hi Dragons, hi Max. We, Philip and August, the co-founders of Odone Moonshine in Germany, are really sad that we cannot join you in Manchester due to COVID-19 travel restrictions. We hoped you enjoyed our moonshine and we wish you, Max, all the best pitching our brand. Max has our absolute support in negotiating any deal with you guys and we hope we will be able to call you a moonshiner soon. Cheers. 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 Prost. So, I'll drink the that. Um, so Max, yeah, you were telling me that how much money has been invested? So basically, in the UK Limited, we have £25,000, which is invested by the parent company, which owns 95% and I own 5%. Okay, so you own 5% of the UK business yes. that you're selling. Yeah. But the offer for investment today is in the big company, isn't no, it's it? it's in the UK company. What? You only own 5% of it. Yeah, but these two guys have the other share and they would have been here. How big is the business in Germany? In Germany. So the Germans turned over last year 7.3 million with a 2.1 million net. I want to be in that business. That unfortunately is not up for. I'll make an offer now in that business. But what you can see is you can see the potential. Like, I mean, the German business does exactly what we do. No, I know, but you're an agent. That doesn't, that's, that's seriously, that's now immediately deflating and unexciting. <clears throat> Okay. Because it's like it's it's like you don't have a piece of the brand, so in every single territory, you feel like you're part of a bigger group, but you're really not. I don't think their words match their actions when they said you've got the keys to the door and can negotiate anything with us. You can't. But can with regards to the UK Limited, I just simply cannot with regards to the GmbH yeah. and the company. That's a shame. A major setback for Max, as the news the investment is purely in the UK arm of the business leaves Peter Jones wanting more. Can Deborah Meaden find anything in the day-to-day -day running of the operation to get the pitch back on track? I'm just trying to establish how much of an independent business this is. Where's it being brewed? We bottle it in Germany at the moment. We are currently looking to move the bottling to the UK because we do hit that critical size where it makes sense. We're n not quite there yet at the size, um, but within the next two to three years, we should be able to reach that. Any loans in the business? Yes, so we have a £50,000 bounce back loan from last year. And then we basically have uh, outstanding invoices for products of around about four, five £590,000. And they're also put in loans of £230,000 uh, from the parent company. So £870,000 worth of loans. Yeah. And we're not making any money yet, is that no. right? We have basically a, a net profit so far from 225000 loss. Max, you're as smart as every German I know. Thank you very much. What I find amazing is that you come in here with a business that has a million euros in debt. Correct? That's correct. True. Yeah. It is overvalued, over-indebted. I just think that there's, there's too many question marks, too many doubts, and too much crystal ball. So on that basis, I'm not gonna invest them out. Too much of the drinks company is not Tatuka Suleiman's taste, and he calls time on the concept. And now, the den's youngest investor is wondering what he can bring to Max's moonshine party. So what is it you want from a dragon? So basically, what we need is ramping up our marketing efforts, which at the moment is sort of like me doing it on the side sort of thing. Should I tell you where that scares me? Go because on. all of the efforts that I, that I, as an investor, say I invested, would put into all of that marketing, if I do one post on my Instagram, I'm, I'm reaching 25% of people who are in India, in Germany, in Taiwan. Yeah. So as an investor, you're only offering me um, the returns on one market, but I'm doing the marketing work for all markets which is going to help the German business as well, which I don't own. I'd be putting in tons of effort and only being cut off a small slice of the return on my effort. And I actually don't think that's fair. So for that reason, yeah, I'm out. I would have potentially been an investor here, but it's very, very difficult now to invest in a business in the UK of which you're a 5% shareholder and I can't even speak to or meet the owners of the company. You know, even if I drank everything that's on this table, I'd still come to the same conclusion. So sadly, I'm going to have to say, Max, I'm out. 
Um, there's a reason I don't ask for majority shareholdings. Mm -hmm. And that's because I want the person that I'm investing in who actually runs this business to have a big chunk of that business. So they are totally focused on making money. Yep. You're a tiny shareholder. It's gonna make lots of money though, percentage-wise. Possibly, but what doesn't work is when there's a bumpy ride and the person who's the life and blood and soul of that business only owns a tiny, tiny percentage. Now, if you were a 75% shareholder, your attitude would be completely different. This is worth it. This is worth me slogging through this. So it's the structure that worries me. You've made it impossible for me to invest. I'm out. Four dragons down, and the entrepreneur is entering the last chance saloon with Sarah Davies. Has she been intoxicated by Max's merchandise? Em, um, this is cool. I mean, it is so cool. <laughs> I, I, I'm just sat here, I'm just looking at that table. I just can't wait till I'm having a party and I get this out. My friends all think I'm cool because I've got it and you look cool. Thanks. I mean, it is literally... I, I, I couldn't love it anymore and... It tastes amazing. Obviously, we don't like the setup of the ownership structure in the business. However, that wouldn't stop me from making you an offer today. Mm -hmm. So the 5% that you're offering us today in the UK yes. company are the German shareholders offering us 5% from their shareholding, and you're staying at your 5%. I'm staying at 5%, so the dilution will happen on the German part of the business. So they are selling their shares. Yes. But the money that I pay for those shares is that going as investment into the UK company? Yes. OK. The thing I'm struggling to get past is the fact that you are currently sitting on £870,000 worth of debt with that valuation. So my worry is they'll have given you a right to negotiate within a certain limit. And I doubt if that limit is anywhere near like a starting point that would mm. whet my appetite. OK. So that's the reason why I'm not going to invest. I'm sorry, Max. Great business, but I'm out. Good luck, Max. Good luck, Thank Max. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Take care. Sarah Davies signs off, marking the end of Max's dragon dream. They love the product, they love the branding, they love the styling. Everything's cool. It was just simply matters um, of the structure of the company. So onwards and upwards from now.